My guest is looking for people who want to participate in a true reality TV show. It offers real adventure, extreme and exotic conditions, real people and real conflict. If you feel called to be transformational, radical and a little uncomfortable, you may be up for the assignment. Let's find out more. Tell us, first of all, the catalyst for so much of what we're going to be talking about came from a near death experience when you were a teenager. I, yes, uh, you know, I'm like many other, I was introduced to the gospel early um, uh, and then God did not just save me, he saved me with a purpose, uh, an assignment for my life. Kind of running from that uh, for many years through the teens, it ended up in a traffic car accident and um, in hospital. You weren't uh, expected to live. I was not expected to live in that hospital room, but I kind of met with Jesus and he said, you know what, this is time to make a decision. <laughs> At 18? Yes, and uh, I said yes. And uh, the journey begun, really the most amazing adventure, but that's where it began, saying yes. And I didn't say yes to an assignment of going preaching or winning the world. I really said just yes to God, whatever you have for my life, I'm willing to do it, and my life is yours which I think is kind of where it begins for everyone. And adventure is the theme of your life. The, your assignment began with leaving Sweden at 21. Mm. Yeah, initially, because I just said yes, uh, it led me to Tanzania, I started doing mission work, and it took a while, and I believe that this is kind of part of that journey. You know, you say yes, and then God starts directing you on the way you need to go. But impressions in, in mission in, 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 in Tanzania and Africa started to really kind of speak to me and I had this first moment where the Lord really spoke to me about what my assignment would be uh, about unrich people and what he spoke to me about was from Revelation 5, 9, 7, 9, uh, Matthew 24, 14, the idea that the gospel of the kingdom uh, will be preached as a testament to all nations and then then will come and I felt Jesus speak to me and this was my assignment that I'm coming back soon uh, but there's people that have not heard my name yet, not heard the gospel. And I felt that tribes and people and languages uh, that have not been reached, that would be my assignment. In the beginning, that was in fact the vision. We, we, we worked trying to reach those tribes. And we're looking at unreached people in different ways. I didn't even know when I began. I just had the idea that it was people that never heard. Um, how do you find them? I, how do you find them? <laughs> <laughs> and then some of those tribes that have since the cross, it, it's an amazing thought to me. Uh, the idea that you have people since the cross, that uh, tribes, ethnos, that have not been introduced to the gospel, that to me is even a challenge. I, I thought as a church, why, why is it? Uh, are they still there? Um, starting to find that they are. And most of the time, in fact, every tribe or experience we had in those is that it's not that they want to hear, they don't want to hear. It's not that they are not responding even when someone comes. It's just that no one has come. Mm. That to me... It became the challenge. I, I life changing really. The vision, one chance for every person. Uh, now you have a number. Do you do you have a current number of how many unreached people groups are in the world today that have never heard the name of Jesus? Well, you know, I think when we look, you, because you have, we have had population growth. So we have about seven billion people living on the planet. Mm. Of this, they talk about between two and a half to three billion is unreached. Now that is an amazing number because think about even maybe in 1800, we were only one billion. So that's our responsibility, it's our generation reaching them. I think it should be birthright. We think it should be birthright. Uh, you know, we talk about birthright, uh, learning how to read or drinking water, but the idea of hearing the gospel once, mm -hmm. should be birthright. Uh, not, not unless the church do it, who will give it? But the unreached of the almost three billion on the world, that's our generation's responsibility. But the idea that you have tribes and people uh, it might be in some of that number of three billion tribes and people that have heard it at some point in history, in church history. But there's corners in the world, frontiers that have yet since the cross, yet not been accessed or reached. That's what we're looking for, chasing. And that number is not that big. In fact, I think that's very small. And that's what we feel is the unfinished assignment. Wow. I'm going to let our viewers see. This is the outcome of a witch doctor coming to faith in Jesus Christ and becoming one of the most turned on evangelists I, I suppose you could ever meet. Um, are all those people now believers? Where is this? In that place, you know, years previous, we were preaching and I've been at that time living as a missionary. 15 years before we were preaching on that mountain. And uh, which the, country? Uh, this is in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia. And towards Somalia. And in this, in this, in this mountain region, as we were preaching there, 
you know, the story, the story backdrop is that, you know, as I was preparing to fly, we had all kinds of opposition, spiritual opposition. The helicopter, in fact, broke down. We were praying through all of this. And eventually, as I'm flying up, coming to this tribe, and I didn't know all the backdrop, there was a witch doctor controlling this mountain called Mount Horo. And in that place, you know, he, he kind of controlled the whole mountain. The churches have tried to reach and not succeeded. But as we were flying up, I feel like the Lord is saying, uh, you know, it's the blood of Jesus that has protected you and now it's saved you to come to this place. So we're starting to preach. We're sharing the gospel as we land. And you have this big multitude. The background is that the witch doctor had challenged us coming, saying if we pray to our spirit and they can't stop the helicopter from coming, we'll go and listen. This is like Elijah and the so, prophets. So of he's there standing. Uh, we're sharing on the blood of Jesus, saying we're not here on all power. It's because we're covered in the blood of Jesus. We're here. It's covered a helicopter, us, and we're sharing. And the first one getting saved, coming forward, saying, for me in my house, I've seen it's only power in the blood of Jesus. It's the witch doctor. We don't know how many thousand come to faith, but it's a lot of people. I didn't meet him for years. We're happening to fly in this region. This is now 15 years after. 15 years after. I heard that he a was a big evangelist, but here I'm flying and some kids are saying, you're Carl. And I have never been in that village. I don't know. And I said, yeah, the gospel came 15 years ago. And we all know we tell that story. So we decided, we decided to then a half year after have a celebration and we would meet again with this witch doctor in a village called Bursa. And we just kind of spread the word, not a lot of posters, but here we come with the Mission 11 team. And that was the gathering that came and celebrated 15 years before the gospel came. He said, now the witch doctor was standing. He's now bishop. He said, this is all our people, you know. <laughs> what a reward. What an affirmation Amazing. for you. Amazing. We were joking about the reality TV. Um, let's give you a taste of what that looks like right now. Carl Harkestam is president, CEO of Joshua Campaign International and the producer, I guess, of the reality TV shows. Seen where? Uh, we're a couple of networks in the U.S., also in Europe and a few, Scandinavia and a few networks. But uh, again, you know, trying to follow, the idea is this. It's called assignment. The idea is that the God, assignment. Will, God will use anyone that say yes. The idea is to show that it's not about your qualifications, about your yes, your commitment to whatever God has. I can see that is really your underlying passion is that everyone discovers their God-given assignment, mm -hmm. their destiny purpose. And I want to mention you have a follow, your second book, Volume 2, Path Unveiled, the assignment series, Volume 2. And really, this is a novel based on real-life experiences. It starts in the aftermath of the earthquake in Haiti, very graphic, uh, but all to ignite young people and maybe not so young people to get into a boot camp and be part of reaching the unreached for Christ. Yep. Uh, where are the boot camps? Well, I know the first one is coming to Canada. Uh, first one, yes, this fall in Brampton, uh, Canada. We're very excited about it. We believe God has a in, a incredible call actually for the church, for the people in Canada. I think you've been missional, pioneers. Uh, and what we're seeing is a, a, really a millennial, next generation, uh, responding to a challenge, a cause, a challenge of, you know, God has an assignment for your life. Uh, the boot camp is very simple. What we're saying is uh, find your assignment. The second most asked question after you might make peace with God is what is my purpose? What is God's plan for my life? And we think that uh, finding that, then building your toolbox is the way to do it. Uh, and, and God really wants you to know it. So by engaging in his assignment, I think we think he will highlight that path. Carl, how long is the boot camp? And then how long is the expedition? 
Uh, the boot camp is uh, 12 weeks, meaning uh, 12 weeks is six weeks prep training. What we're teaching is Fort assignment. It's not just a mission trip. We're actually given an assignment. They're going to reach a tribe. So we're teaching chronological storytelling, soul winning, basic ministry discipleship, prepping them for this trip. The experience then is six weeks or five and a half weeks. And then it's a debriefing talking about really what's next. What is God's assignment? Wow. And of course, that's Joshua 1 11. That's it. Which uh, is? That's, that's the challenge, God's assignment for a generation of faith. Was this Joshua, you know, as God is speaking to him, saying Moses now is dead. Here's the assignment. It was the same that was for Moses' generation. And Joshua's response in verse 11 is this, Joshua 1, 11. In the verse 11 was this, go and tell the people, get ready. We're not just going to uh, think about it, pray about it. We're going to do it. Wow. <laughs> I just have a feeling there have been some hearts ignited here. Mm -hmm. This is so unique. And so exciting. Carl, God bless you and your wife. Jennifer. Jennifer for uh, just being obedient, saying yes to God at 18. And look at what's happening in our world as a result. Thank you. Thrilling. Thank you. Very Come again. Good. Thank you. Very good to be here. Oh, so many stories. And of course, you can read those stories in Path Unveiled. Go to the website and go to God about what he might be saying in your heart right now about his assignment for you. Call our prayer line if you'd like someone to pray with you too. 